Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hey guys, we're your hosts, M and J. And today we're looking at the last issue of Wonder Twins 2019. This issue was probably the worst out of the bunch, which is saying something, but it basically doubles down on all the weird lectures we got throughout the series. And it comes off as extremely out of touch, but still high and mighty. There was also a serious lack of superheroics in this series, even though it features superheroes as the main characters, which is really disappointing. Instead, we were lectured about topics that are important to reality, but they're so far removed from reality that it's impossible to take them seriously. And they lay it on really thick in this issue. The cover shows the twins saying goodbye. There's a collage of photos behind them, and it has kind of a yearbook feel to it, including some signatures from the twins. One saying, see you next series. They've already crossed over with other books like Young Justice, but I'm not sure if they're going to have another series specifically about them, or if they'll just have cameos in other comics. The issue opens with the twins letting the Mads stay at their apartment, since they have nowhere else to go. Then Zan laments that life isn't easy for a refugee, which is true but not really applicable to this case. They're in this situation because of Polly's own actions, not because of something like war or natural disasters. But the comic is very adamant that everything bad that happened this whole series was exclusively the fault of society, and that these characters don't need to do any self-reflecting at all. Not even a little bit. Jaina says everything seems to be falling apart despite all their hard work. Well, maybe if you had gone to your best friend and told her that you stopped the League of Annoyance and had been there when her father disappeared and the whole internet was talking about it, maybe things would have turned out differently, Jaina. But instead, you went to the Hall of Justice and sat there bored for several hours. The next two pages are just jokes of Jaina doing the morning announcements, and they're all cynical. I assume this is just here to make her cynical, as if she isn't already, but in my opinion it was a waste of two pages. I guess it's good that Miss Temple and Mr. Turner are talking. Zan and Jaina head to the Hall of Justice after school, and Jaina is complaining how Earth is a tough rodeo, saying that Polly and her dad saved the world from Colonel 86, even though realistically it shouldn't have been a threat, but that they did it while they were on the run from the law, and if the Justice League had caught them then the world would be at the mercy of an outdated program. And how can anyone stay optimistic when they had to save the world from the people who are supposed supposed to be saving the world. There's a lot that's wrong with this. Superheroes don't rely on punching every problem away, like this comic seems to think. Apparently Cyborg and Mr. Terrific don't exist, or any other tech-based superhero, but even Batman should have been able to handle that. Plus, Polly didn't need to be on the wrong side of the law. Sure, her dad was working with the League of Annoyance because of circumstances, but they could have gotten him out of it. Polly just decided to choose the Scrambler over her best friend. It makes no sense. But it's Earth's fault. Because people don't need to take responsibility for their own actions. But they're both bummed out that they can't tell Superman what they've been up to. Only to walk into the Hall of Justice and be confronted by the Justice League. Superman starts lecturing them about aiding and embedding known fugitives. Including a member of the League of Annoyance. And creator of the Colonel 86 program. But Zan argues that he saved them from Colonel 86 so that should rule it out. Otherwise they would have been sent back to the 1980s. And working on a hick farms. I still don't see how any of this reflects on the 1980s. The 80s had a strong economy and there was a tech boom. Bringing up Hickory Farms just seems like another swipe at the working class instead of actually being social commentary on the 80s. Also, Hickory Farms was founded in the 1950s. They could have at least referenced something that was actually from the 80s. Anyway, Superman tells them that even though the results were good, they still have rules and regulations they have to follow, which is extremely hypocritical for him to say, because that's exactly what he was told on the Zagronian border when he forced them to take those refugees, even though it was against their protocol. So it's important for the Wonder Twins to follow the law, but not the rest of the League? Besides, the Wonder Twins were there in Zagrovia too, so Superman just doesn't have a leg to stand on. So basically, America's laws have to be respected, but Zagronia's doesn't. It comes off as rules for thee and not for me. In other words, this series doesn't treat the Justice League as characters in their own right. They're just plot devices to be used by the author. Superman doesn't actually have his own set of values and beliefs. In this comic, he's being used as a stand-in for society, while in issue 9, he was fighting against the evils of society, forcing an entire nation to bend to his will. And I think the lack of consistency is one of the most frustrating aspects of the series. Wonder Woman says that they're supposed to lean on each other, so I guess it's not that they aided and embedded a criminal, it's that they did it alone? But Jaina just says that they're going to be the ones to fix the Earth. How do they expect to do that when they ditched their own plan 
planet because they were too ashamed of their ancestor, leaving 5,000 people trapped in the Phantom Zone for no good reason. Green Lantern says that they're just bored, but instead of addressing that comment, Jaina insists that they're not trying to get a promotion. What's that supposed to be, some kind of subliminal messaging? Jaina says all she did was help her friend, but I think it comes down to the fact that she didn't go to Polly after she defeated the League of Annoyance. They could have worked through things then, and Polly wouldn't have held the world hostage. That doesn't excuse the fact that Polly working with the Scrambler to begin with was completely ridiculous given the circumstances, but still. Jaina says they broke the rules, but in the end they saved the world, so that's all that matters. Whatever happened to the ends don't justify the means. Anyway, Superman says it's not their job to save the world, so Jaina walks away saying that it's their job. This is basically a callback to issue 6, when Polly pulled the same thing on Jaina. Cell phone Sylvia is talking to Lex over at Lex Towers. She's upset because she lost her phone and it's the only thing she has going for her in her life. The twins got caught on security footage stealing the phone, so Lex says all they have to do is steal it back and they can even get their revenge. But since Sylvia doesn't have any actual superpowers, Lex has to call in a few more people. He chooses a newcomer named the Ringmaster, because why not introduce new characters in the very last issue? And also the supervisor of his privately owned prison. Apparently he thinks her management skills will be useful, which sounds like she's coming along just to supervise. Sylvia thinks that sounds like the League of Annoyance again, which she's not really interested in. But Lex just wants her to get her phone back because it's the only reason anyone should care about her. Elsewhere, the twins are walking home from the Hall of Justice, and Jaina is saying that she thinks the Earth was a mistake. Zan asks if she means coming here or just the planet in general. You know, you guys could have stayed on your own planet and try to fix the problems there. 5,000 innocent people are still trapped in the Phantom Zone, and you two have the power to help them. But no, they were too busy being embarrassed about their family's history, so they decided to be poetic and leave the planet, just so they can go to a totally new planet and be super judgy. Maybe people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. But the new League of Annoyance shows up, and the Ringmaster introduces himself. He can tie people up with rings, which he says is a minor power, but he believes the twins can relate. I still believe that shape-shifting into any animal or any form of water is a good power, but this comic is convinced otherwise. Sylvia demands to have her cell phone back or else she'll drown Xan, and then come up with an ironic way to kill Jaina too. They can probably just have her being mauled by a bear or something. The supervisor questions why they don't just shoot them, which is a fair point, but Sylvia insists on being poetic. Luckily for the twins, Gleek was in Xan's backpack, but seeing the ringmaster causes Gleek to have flashbacks from his time in the circus, so he attacks the ringmaster. Unfortunately, Sylvia had a taser and uses it against Gleek, knocking him out, so the ringmaster says that they should just toss them in the river and be done with it. But here's where the twist comes into the comic. It turns out that the supervisor is actually the scrambler who switched bodies with her, and he frees the twins. So they're able to use their powers, except they transform into a pug in a puddle of water. But I guess it's better than the gopher moat. Barely. Sylvia tries to use her taser to defend herself, only for Xan to use it against her, since he's able to amplify the shock. He goes to check on Gleek while the scrambler switches bodies with the ringmaster. However, he forgot about the gun, so now the ringmaster has it and is threatening them with it. But Jaina managed to sneak in with the Kryptonian Disruptor and zaps the two of them away to the Phantom Zone, presumably to never be seen again. So they just introduced a new character only to basically kill him off immediately? Then again, no character in this book is actually developed properly, so I really shouldn't be surprised. I'm also not sure how to feel about this in general, since I don't actually care about these characters anyway. So then the twins go to a coffee coffee shop with the Scrambler. You know, the guy who held the entire world hostage, and by the way, switched a million people's bodies, and no one ever did anything about that. But they just casually ask him how he escaped prison? Shouldn't you two be taking him in again? Instead, he tells them about how he caused a power outage, and switched bodies with the supervisor. Not long after that, he got the call from Lex Luthor and decided to go with it. Their only response to this is that the server he was using to switch everyone's minds is gone now and that Polly isn't going to help him anymore. And apparently that makes everything okay now? All the pain and suffering he caused? The million people who are still body swapped? How many of them are dead? He says he's finally figured out the only changes that stick are the ones people make for themselves, and adds to be careful what boxes you let people put you in, because you might not be able to get out. Which is a really strange message for this book to have, because this comic is super judgy, and has been putting people in boxes this whole whole run. It 
it even does it this issue. Apparently the supervisor is a worse person than the scrambler because she works for the system. But yeah, he just leaves. He's just at large. Who knows what he's gonna do out there? Never mind that his actions were absolutely despicable and all the pain and suffering he caused. But no, he's the victim. All because he's an entitled brat who was mad that people didn't like his magic show. What a jerk. So the twins decide to go back to the Hall of Justice to get fired. Then they can move on to trying to help Polly and her dad. They meet with the League only to find Polly and her father there already, which upsets Jaina. She asks how this is possible, so Batman reminds her that he's the world's greatest detective, but he couldn't find the Scrambler and Polly when they were holding the world hostage for a month. Not to mention he was totally helpless against Colonel 86. Again, huge lack of consistency with this series. Jaina starts pleading for them, but then Superman gives a speech about how their powers aren't always necessary to solve a problem, and it's very long-winded, but basically Jaina's speech made him change his mind, so Bruce Wayne is funding a new wing of the Justice League. It's called Asterix, which stands for Assessing Strategic Threats Requiring Innovative Skills and Knowledge, and they're putting the twins and the mass in charge of it, despite the fact that the twins don't have any skills or knowledge. But they basically get to judge everything around them, like they've been doing throughout this comic, but now it's official. But Superman has to keep lecturing, saying that they have to focus on solving problems instead of creating them, except that's the opposite of what this comic did. All of the problems were avoidable, but the characters themselves were responsible for most of them. Baron Nightblood didn't need to attack a couple, Polly didn't need to join the Scrambler and basically commit genocide across the planet. They admitted they were going to kill people and they didn't care. Xan and Jaina could have put effort into fixing their own planet, but instead they came to Earth and could have been effective heroes, but most of the time they were just obnoxious weirdos. We can definitely have conversations about the ills of society. The problem is nothing about this series was productive. Pretty much the opposite, in fact. But they hug, and it's all supposed to be a big happy ending. None of it feels earned, but at least we're almost done. So it jumps ahead to a year later, where the new structure has been built, and work is underway. They start scanning for asteroids that could potentially hit Earth, but didn't Superman say this was supposed to be for threats that they can't use their strength against? And doesn't the Hall of Justice already scan for asteroids like we saw in issue 7? Just saying. Shouldn't they be putting their effort into helping people on Earth anyway? Like what about Repulso? Maybe they can find a cure for his BO problem. Especially considering the fact that he's actually oppressed. This is a man with a medical condition, but they basically force him to be a prisoner and use him for their convenience. Honestly, it would have made sense if he became an antagonist. Instead, he seems like a pretty chill guy, and he doesn't deserve his lot in life. So why not work on fixing problems like that, instead of doing something the Hall of Justice can already do? Anyway, Jaina asks Zan if he resents the fact that they have to be together to use their powers. Zan says no because it means he'll never be alone. That's a sweet sentiment, but it kind of makes it look like Jaina resents having to use their powers together, especially since Zan adds that they're stuck together whether she likes it or not. This might have been interesting to explore if the comic actually cared about characterization, but the situation is unique to the Wonder Twins, and this was supposed to be their book, but it didn't feel that way. At least it's over now. This whole series spent a lot of time lecturing and talking down to the reader, and then this issue just patted itself on the back. The two of us have actually been fans of the Wonder Twins for a while, as silly as that is, ever since reruns of the Super Friends. They're just fun characters. They're not that serious, but it's not like every superhero thing has to be super serious. We were actually pretty excited when we found out that DC remembered the Wonder Twins existed and were making a new comic, and we were expecting a fun, light-hearted superhero comic. I wish we had known that wasn't DC's intentions. I guess if we had done some digging, we could have found that out, but usually we see a comic that we're interested in and we just pick it up, but I guess we can't do that anymore. But thanks for watching, everybody, especially if you've seen all 12 of these videos. It was a lot to get through. Special thanks to our members, Caleb Nelson, Stutania, Tyron Carnivore, Adam K, and Shiny Orc Boy. If you'd like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. If you'd like to support us, we have a GoFundMe and a Buy Me Coffee. Links will be in the description. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like and subscribe to this channel to see more content like this. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.